And this is such an interesting point because so for, for so many people, you know, supporting the troops and to boiling down to increasing a military budget. Mm -hmm. But a statistic that I recently realized and have been parroting 24-7 um, because I find it to be so visceral and compelling is that it would cost $81, $81 billion to cancel all medical debt, mm -hmm. which is the same amount that many, many Democrats, including lots in the presidential field, um, voted to increase Trump's military budget by. Mm -hmm. Right. So it really does seem to be this um, priority issue. Mm -hmm. The folks who ask how you're going to pay for it don't ask that when we're talking about increasing Never. the military budget of a person who everybody agrees mm -hmm. is not well suited to have yeah. their, their finger on the on the button and, mm -hmm. and to have the power that he does. At the same time, the questions emerge when we're talking about medical debt where 500,000 people in the wealthiest country in the history of the world are going bankrupt every year yeah. from medical debt. Yeah. Um, how do you, how do you, do you find that people um, are, are kind of stuck on that, on, on the kind of narrow definition of how to support the military? Is that something that you talk about as you're, or as you're organizing people, how oh. best to support the military? Oh, yeah, it's, I mean, I, I, I regularly, and <laughs> I regularly rant about this. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I think there, I don't expect everyone to have a deep down understanding of where exactly every dollar is going for the military budget. But when you look at discretionary spending, and you know, for, for those who don't know, discretionary spending is essentially the money that's allocated every single year. Um, so when they say that they have a spending bill, most of that is what they're talking about. And it's, I wanna say about a third of the total spending that the federal government does every single year. Uh, half of that is DOD. Mm. The other half of that is everything else. Mm. So Department of Justice, Housing, Health and Human Service, all those, all those other departments that we talk about that are cabinet level agencies, they're being funded with roughly the same amount of money that just goes to the Pentagon, that just goes to DOD. And within that, people think that when you're cutting the military budget, we're talking about, or even holding it steady, right? You're talking about holding steady military pay. Military pay is about, I want to, I think it's roughly 150 or 60 billion. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, that's, it's a lot, but I mean, it's not a lot compared to the whole number. Budget, yeah. And, and uh, I think it was since 2016, we're talking over a hundred billion dollars worth of funding increases for the Pentagon in a war that's been going on for 19 years. And that money, most of it is not going to the Lance Corporals, the privates, the, the petty officers. And it's going towards big contracts. It's going towards Raytheon, you know, it's yeah. going towards the general dynamic, all these companies that make billions and billions of dollars off of our capacity for committing war overseas. And that, and ultimately, again, it goes back to what I said before. When I was in Afghanistan, I started questioning, how much is this really making my community safer? And how much is this actually positively impacting the United States? And I'm skeptical, and it's a very high price for us to be very skeptical of that. Well, what kind of things did you see 